Hello, Aloy. Hey, Gaia. So, uh, me and Beta, I guess you heard what happened. Yes. I am continuously impressed by the complexity of human relationships. Despite the unpleasant circumstances that led to your quarrel, I am pleased to see you have both found an agreeable resolution. Well, two heads are better than one, right? Yes, I believe so. Are you ready to depart for Cauldron Gemini? Or we can continue our conversation, if you like. Nah. So, about Beta. I never really saw the difference between us, until now. She's been through so much. Completely alone. You have both endured many hardships. Different in almost every respect, yet equally remarkable. I like to think of you as two miracles, born of Elizabeth Sobek. Three, then. Let's not forget about you, Gaia. How was all of us settling in? As soon as she arrived, Alva was eager to study the data in the Archive. A particular file soon caught her attention. Information about a machine assistant devoted to keeping living spaces neat and orderly. <laughs> I informed her that once I am empowered with the abilities of Hephaestus, I may be able to design such a machine. I'm sure she'll like that. When I set out to find a way to bring you back, I never thought we'd be here, like this. Among friends. They have all come a long way with their improvised educations. Varl has suggested that one day we might extend this model to more tribal inhabitants, once the biosphere has been stabilized. Yeah, that's not such a bad idea. As long as you're the one running the lessons. So what will happen to this place while we're at Gemini? All systems within this facility will continue to operate. As Minerva will no longer be masking this location, the facility will be exposed to detection. Though without my presence, it is unlikely to attract attention. Let's hope so. So I, uh, found Thebes. What do you think Ted would have done if his life extension treatments had worked? It seems he convinced himself it was his duty to guide future humans. Given the tribal nature of new humans, and his ability to use Omega Clearance on the terraforming system, I imagine he would have convinced one or more tribes to worship him as their patriarchal deity. Okay. Yep, glad that didn't happen. Aside from Gaia Prime and Thebes, there was one other underground facility that was sealed before the Pharaoh Plague reached it. Elysium. The place where Zero Dawn staff and their families went to live out their lives. Do you know what happened to it? Elysium was designed to provide life support for 100 years. My data indicates the facility went offline well before then. Did the Pharaoh Plague find them? Unknown. My connection to the facility was abruptly severed. Hmm. Okay, people. It's time to head out. I'll get everyone together. Let's go!
Du, du, du. All right, connections in place. Booting up. Beta, Aloy. I am fully installed on this core and ready to connect to the Cauldron Network. It's good to hear your voice. Erend, everyone. Fire your pulses and sound off. I'm at my Cauldron. This thingy, it's blinking. Did I do it right? In position at my cauldron. My pulse generator is blinking also. That means they're working. I'm in position and mine is too. Mine as well. Okay. Radio silence until I give the all clear. Signing off. Gaia, let's cage the beast. <laughs> Connecting to the cauldron network now. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Clearance confirmed. Initiating containment sequence. Critical threat detected in narrative escape containment. Applying. Uh, uh, lock it down! Terminating external connections. It's working! It's got nowhere to go! Capture imminent. Initiating contingency 13F. Wait, what's that? Malware detected. Attempting to compensate. Containment of the <laughs> Cracked. Look! Facility activated. Engaging autonomous defenses. Uh -oh. Directive neutralize. That means machines are on their way. Uh! Get ready. Here they come. For all stay here. Protect Beta. We got it. Be careful.
Stay back. That's all of them for now. You two okay? Grab this on the go. Chase after Hephaestus. Force it out of wherever it's hiding. Make it retreat to the core. Deactivate connection node 183. Oh! 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 Thanks for the heads up. I'm almost there. Mm -hmm. Oh, got a dark anchor applied. It's some kind of production chamber. Festus is up to something, all right. What what kind of machine is it trying to build? I don't know, but I'm gonna shut it down. I bet those metal carriers will lead me to where it's getting materials from. I bet that's where Festus is hiding too. I gotta find where Festus is hiding. Looks like there are a couple of ways I could go. Defenses to materials. Well, that doesn't sound good. Those machines are in a hurry. I might be able to catch a ride on the rail, go over the shield. to rewire most of the components in the core, but the energy processor's cracked. Without a way... I gotta find a way past the shield. Maybe we'll leave us back. Activating 
Fuck yeah. Oh. Oh, great. The machine's on the way. Beta! Hephaestus has locked me out of the node. Any ideas? I'll see what I can do. Got them all. I, I tapped into the core's network hub. I managed to disrupt Hephaestus' control of the node. You should be able to override it now. Nice. Thanks. It sounds like it fled to another chamber. Well, I better not get comfortable. <laughs> Lightning. I gotta find a way over it. Aloy, more machines keep coming. Please tell me you're getting close. I'm working on it. I've been smashing through a lot of machines on my side, too. I guess Aaron's missing out. Aloy, I'm making progress on the bypass, but I, I need something to hold the cycling module together. Maybe a ligament from one of the machine carcasses? Right. O or some luminous braiding. And you could reinforce it with a conversion cylinder. For increased connectivity! I, I think... I think we can do this, Aloy! Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. And uh, gold one Gemini. <laughs> oh, skip you all. Got it.
Zijn er nog in? Kom meer gekant om mij. Again. Oh, that doesn't sound good. I'll try to get your access back. It'd be a different fight if I could get to that weapon. Is running out of places to hide. Uh, Aloy, I just registered a huge energy surge back in the production chamber. Something big is happening. Here too. Everything's glowing. The machine Hephaestus was building. It must have finished it. Well, it's it's powerful. Whatever it is. 
I'm almost done with the core repairs. Should... Should we come to you? Maybe I could distract the machine if... No, Beta. Just stay where you are, okay? Your way machine's my job. Be safe. Yeah, what the hell are you doing? I know. Yeah. I'm not a good old boy. I should scan it first. Oh shit. There's things on its legs are glowing. I think it's charging up. Yeah. It's done. You did it! Uh, there, there should be one more note to override. Good. Stand by. I'm sending Hephaestus back to you. <laughs> no more hiding, Hephaestus! Make sure it stays there. I'm heading back. And then we can start the merge. Because of you, Beta. I'm glad you came along. And you, Varl. We couldn't have done any of this without you. Right back at you, Aloy. I'm going to the gene. The bypass is done. After. The core is stable. Hephaestus is 100% contained. Now we better get started with the merge. It's all set up. Gaia, establish the link, please. Done. <coughs> okay, 
To complete the merge, we need to excise Hephaestus' malicious code. Carefully. And that's energy. Well, hello, redundant copy. You cost us quite a lot of time. <laughs> Eric, get beta. And squash that bug while you're at it. <laughs> Tilda, get Gaia and Hephaestus ready for transport. Tilda! I failed. Hush. All is not lost. Tilda! What the hell are you doing? Stop her! No! I can't even see her! quite a hit when Gerard attacked you. I imagine you must still be in a great deal of pain. I can assure you that we are safe. The others can't detect us here. You mean the other Zeniths? You must be Tilda. I wasn't sure if... Beta would have told you about me. Where is she? Alive. And while she isn't where she wants to be, not in urgent danger. We must discuss how to get her back, of course, after you've shaken off the cobwebs. When you're ready, take the stairs down the hall and, and come see me. In the meantime, I'll make breakfast. Breakfast? Okay. And it will be a
Heel veel klassieke muziek. Wat is dit? Just a few favorites from my collection. Ja. Rescued and stored here just before I went off world. Take a look if you like. I'm curious to hear your impressions. My friend is dead. Beta and Gaia are gone, and you want me to look at old paintings? Don't be so quick to dismiss the comfort we can find in art. Or the insight we might gain. I'm okay for me, Alf. Alle Nederlands talige groepen. Ariane. Die ken ik niet. Ja, ja, dat gaat het wel Dat is zo soon. Ik heb meer belangrijke dingen te worden over. We both do. Er is much we are trying to save. Not the least of which is in that vault. There's nothing wrong with savoring such treasures for a moment more. Or come upstairs and we'll get down to business. Sorry, had to go deal with something. Stunning, isn't it? Paintings weren't the only masterpieces of my people's golden age. This is Von Vianen's lidded ewer, molded from a single sheet of silver. What was it for? How like Elizabeth you are. <laughs> Function over form. Its practical purpose was less important than its meaning. Von Vianen created it in honor of his late brother, who himself was a famous silversmith. A memorial? Yes. Such beauty from sorrow. There you are. Feeling better? How did you find us at the cauldron? And what did you do to everyone right before I passed out? All business, I see. Well, suffice it to say we were keeping a very close eye on Hephaestus, knowing we would need it at some point. Your ruse didn't fool us, and as for my little trick, it was an overload of the senses. Accompanied by an energy discharge. Gerard and Eric were only momentarily disoriented due to their shields, but it... It rendered you unconscious while I got you out. Perhaps some breakfast might steady you a bit? This was your house. The one you recreated for Beta, in the data channel you shared. How perceptive of you. Please, this way. After everything your people have done, you think I'm just gonna sit down and have a chat with you? They're not my people. They never were, and especially not now. You shot off into space with them and live with them for a thousand years before coming back. So what made you suddenly turn on them? Quite simply, this. My old focus. You repaired it? But that means you've seen incredible things. What you've accomplished in two decades of life
thousand years at my back and I haven't even come close. I'm sorry if I invaded your privacy, but I had to, in order to understand, to be enlightened. You truly are Elizabeth's blood, with her drive, her sense of mission, her integrity. Watching all this shamed me for the company that I've kept. Having seen it, all I want is to help you. Even if it means stopping your friends? Especially so. Please, sit down. There. That's better. Now, we must recover Beta and Gaia at all costs. By now, you must know that Gerard intends to use Gaia to reboot the Earth's biosphere. Remaking this world to specifications that would only suit us immortals. This process will kill every living thing on the planet. He calls it a clean install. Not if I stop him first. Not if we do. And once he and the others are gone, we can work together to fulfill Elizabeth's dream. I'm sure Beta told you that there's a build of the Apollo database on board our ship. A complete collection of human knowledge. With that and Gaia, we could do everything Elizabeth wanted. Heal the biosphere, educate the people of this world, uplift them. Create the world she imagined. <clears throat> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. From what I've seen, your friends are invincible. I do wish you would stop calling them my friends. <laughs> and they're not invincible. In fact, a friend of yours has found a way to defeat them. Silence. Oh, he's been a busy bee, building an army powerful enough to crash through Gerard's precious base. Regala and her rebels. Even now, she's preparing a final march on the Tanakh the capital. When she wins, she'll have the entire tribe under her control. Hundreds of warriors and machines to throw at the base. She's been duped. They'll all perish, of course. But it should be enough to break Gerard's defenses and allow Silence to kill him. Along with all the others. Using the new weapon he's developed. Yes, he's found a way to circumvent our shields. Truly an exceptional man. He's planned for everything. Except you and me. You see, while his army is battering down Gerard's doors, you and I will sneak in through a back way, one that only I know about, while Silence and my friends are busy battling each other. We'll take back Beta and Gaia. I told you I want to help you. I mean it. You said Beta is not in urgent danger, so what are the Zeniths doing to her? Putting her to work. Merging Hephaestus with Gaia. A difficult, time-consuming task, as I'm sure you know. They will compel her if need be, but her life is not in danger. She's the only one who can do it. Because you people made her to be nothing but a tool. Gerard's idea, not mine. They always viewed me with suspicion when I attempted any form of kindness towards her. That's why I created the Data Channel. A virtual place where we could speak in peace. So this channel you shared with Beta, none of the other Zeniths ever found out about it. Gerard believes he's the most cunning of all of us. Even after a thousand years, he still can't imagine that I would outwit him. The channel allowed me to interact with Beta away from their mistrustful eyes. It offered us a chance to be ourselves. Until you cut off all contact. Yes. Though it pained me. I was worried that our meetings would do her more harm than good. 
She felt like you tossed her aside. I was afraid the others would find out and punish her. She may not have had the comforts of friendship anymore, but at least I ensured she was safe. I know it seems harsh, but you must believe that her well-being has always been paramount to me. Why did you make the data channel look like this place? I built this house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place. Not just for me, but for the art stored below. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. My old focus. How did you find it, let alone repair it? When we encountered you at the Hades Proving Lab, Gerard saw you as a redundancy. I knew better. You were a revelation. After your dramatic escape, bravo, by the way. Gerard and Eric assumed you were dead and gave up the hunt. I wasn't so sure. When the others were busy, I returned to the lab and searched for any trace of you. That's when I found this little treasure. Not easy to repair, but certainly worth the effort. As I watched your life unfold, you were like a splash of color on a worn canvas. What Liz was, and more. Did you show it to the others? Of course not. It was your actions that inspired me to defy them. It's worth noting that if I hadn't found it and watched its contents, I wouldn't have known to save you at the cauldron. You'd be dead. So I should be grateful? Am I? If you like. So you know all about me? What about you? What would you like to know? Well... Start with your life on Earth. When I was eight... Terrorists flooded my home city. Thousands drowned, my parents included. I was one of the few who survived. My guardian sent me to boarding school. Among my peers, I was the strange girl, the orphan to be avoided. All because of circumstances beyond my control. Oh. So we're a lot alike, huh? Aren't we? You were an outcast, but you didn't let that stop you from getting what you needed. Neither did I. I climbed my way out of desolation and used my wits to build a fortune. First from the technical analysis of art and the detection of forgeries, profitable expertise in those days. But as it turned out, the software I developed was even more useful for counterintelligence. From there, it was only a short step to gathering extremely valuable intelligence on my own. You were a spy? Which? More like a service one could turn to for information. Which? I had to remain anonymous, of course, to protect my privacy. But despite that anonymity, Far Zenith inevitably sought me out. What happened when Farzinath approached you? They painted an irresistible vision of humanity's future. One where we need not fear illness or death. Where we explored the furthest reaches of the stars and thrived. It was only later that I realized that they only intended to bequeath this future to the rich and powerful. By the time I finally figured it out, the walls were closing in. Faro's machines were devouring the Earth. So I accepted Far Zenith's invitation to a birth on the Odyssey. I wanted Liz to come, but she had nobler plans, as you well know.
So you didn't know the other Zeniths were monsters until it was too late? I, I knew some of them were. Certainly. It, it wasn't until we were off-planet that I understood the true scope of their greed. I was grateful to simply be alive, but the others became obsessed with a kind of effortless immortality. They built a colony where machines serviced their every need, where any memory or fantasy could be endlessly savored in virtual reality. It wasn't life. It was stultifying. 